Welcome everyone. My name is Taurus the Legend. Thank you so much for joining us in our 12th and final episode for 2022 of the SAP Garage Series. Today, we're going to be bringing you the mission enable supplier collaboration across SAP and Microsoft Azure ecosystems using SAP BTP. Um, we have our colleagues uh, Uma Anbaz Jagan, uh, Associate Architect, Platform Advisory and Adoption at SAP. Uh, also, uh, my colleagues Praveen Kumar Padegal and uh, Lalit Mohan Sharma to pre present to us the, uh, the mission today. Uh, before we get started, um, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for, uh, for joining us over the, the last year. Um, your, your, your feedback is incredibly important to us. So if you can just take a moment and, and tell us how we did this last year, uh, what missions you'd like to see, you'd like to see in, in the coming year, we're in the planning phase of 2023. If you can just quickly take this, uh, this survey, please do, um, do, uh, give us your feedback here. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to, uh, to Uma. Yeah. Thank you, Torrance. Please let me know if you're able to see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. All right. So hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this session on building collaborative applications in MS Teams using SAP BTP and Microsoft Azure. Myself, Oman Bergen, and I have my colleagues Lalit and Praveen. We are part of Platform Adoption and Advisory Unit and focus on creating interoperable reference architectures with hyperscalers and BTP. So uh, when it comes to uh, creating business process extensions, you know, with Microsoft Productivity Suite, you know, there are a couple of aspects or a couple of, uh, you know, important things that we can look at, you know, not only from the extension part of it, but we can also look at, you know, how do we integrate our platforms with uh, hyperscaler platforms? You know, we can look at it from a network perspective, from a security perspective and data and analytics. So in this scenario, you know, we are focusing more on creating an event-driven based architecture where we, we will see how we can uh, receive events from our SAP LOB systems and uh, send them to the Microsoft Azure ecosystem. Now, in this case, on extreme left, you have the Microsoft Productivity Suite, where we have uh, Office 365, your Outlook, your MS Teams, which can directly uh, access and allows users to uh, you know take actions or you know do certain business transactions you know from that user interface via SAP BTP platform. Now, from a business scenario perspective, you know, we are going to talk about in detail about a supplier collaboration scenario where here, if you take two personas, say one persona as a, a supply chain uh, operations manager who wants to take a look at all the pending purchase orders in the system and wants to collaborate with an external supplier over an MS Teams meeting and then go ahead and update the purchase order confirmation summary in S4. You know, during this entire process, you know, we will have the suppliers also who will be logging into the MS Teams, uh, you know, meeting and have a conversation with our, uh, you know, SAP business user. So this is the end-to-end -end scenario that we are going to see today. You know, from a high level architecture perspective, you know, what you see on the extreme left is the Microsoft Azure platform, and then we have the BTP platform. And from an SAP LOB systems, you know, here we are integrating with SAP S4 HANA. So here, you know, there are a few technical services that we will leverage from both the platforms, and you will see how seamlessly we can integrate these two platforms to create such kind of interoperable uh, architectures. Now, from the Azure platform, you know, we have the Azure AD, you know, for the user management and the user store. And then we have the bot service, the blob storage, and the enterprise app registration. You know, these are some of the technical services that we will be leveraging. And uh, an instance of bot service is something that we will use to connect the bot to the MS Teams. From a BTP perspective, you know, we have the Cloud Foundry runtime where we have the extension application that is running. And then we are leveraging the SAP Event Mesh for receiving events from SAP S4 HANA. For connectivity, we have the destination service and the connectivity service or the private link service, you know, which with which we can seamlessly connect to the SAP S4 HANA. 
system. So you will be seeing in detail, you know, uh, how these services are leveraged, what are the configurations that are required in each of these platforms. You know, very quickly, if I have to run through a demo so that you can get a glimpse of how this whole application runs, you know, when you log in uh, to MS Teams, you know, as a supply chain operations manager, you know, you will, the first thing that we will be doing here is to go ahead and add uh, the bot. So you will see Praveen will be talking about, you know, how do we create these bots? You know, how do you create these MS Teams applications so that you will be able to do this? Now, when it comes to the application, you know, for, as the user logs in, this is the kind of uh, notifications that we will receive. These notifi notifications come from SAP S4 HANA. So here they can go ahead, they can view the details, they can try to set up a meeting invite, they can invite the suppliers and the supply chain operations manager, that is the SAP business user, will be joining the meeting. In this meeting, the supplier who is an external user also can join in. And here in the side panel, you will see how we can view the purchase order details, you know, view the uh, uh, you know, um, uh, confirmation summary details. And here during the discussion, they can view the details and update this confirmation summary to S4 HANA system itself. So, you know, we will be showing you how to create these side panels, you know, what is that that you will require from a configuration and a coding perspective. And these are the blog posts. These are the GitHub reports that are available for you to take a look at it. And, you know, a detailed step is mentioned in it. You know, from a Discovery Center mission, you know, you will see that there are two scopes here. We have the basic scope as well as the advanced scope. The basic scope talks about a purchase requisition approval scenario. And the advanced scope, which we are talking today, is talking about the supply collaboration. So Lalith will uh, initially take you through all the configurations that are required in uh, Azure at, uh, at BTP and S4 HANA. Over to you, Lalith. Yeah. Thank you, Amma. Uh, I will share my screen first. Um, let me know, are you able to see my screen? Yes, we yeah. can see that. Yeah, so um, as soon as you will come to the uh, project board, uh, you will be able to see it here that we have a two different uh, scope here, like basic scope and advanced scope. So um, Uma has already mentioned that in the basic scope, we, we have a scenario where we are approving the purchase acquisition and the advanced scope. So we are um, confirm, we are getting a confirmation from the supplier that uh, that purchase order uh, is going to be delivered in a, uh, such time frame or something like that. So uh, both the scenario having a um, same configuration um, and similarly, they have a same kind of setup. Uh, so uh, I will go through the advanced scope uh, setup things. And these two uh, cards, um, Uma already explained that how, what exactly the implementation is scope and how the, um, what exactly the scenario uh, in the advanced scope. So uh, these are the, uh, these three uh, cards will uh, help you to set up and configure, uh, configure the your system which is required to build this extension app so first one is like we have we need to set it up the sub account and uh, we uh, uh, second one we need to uh, we need to uh, configure the microsoft azure account and the third one we will configure the as per system also so if i go to the uh, first card here you able to see that uh, uh, we have completely step by step we have mentioned that what exactly you need to do the uh, uh, we need to we need to do to set up this um, uh, set up the account from the btp site if you already have existing sub account so uh, you you can use the same one and if you don't have you can follow this uh, tutorial to get a free free access free account access and uh, make sure that a global account administrative load collection is assigned to your user so you can easily create a, a, a sub accounts and you can assign the entitlements for uh, which is required for this application 
So these are the services we have used in this uh, application, um, uh, the cloud friendly runtime environment, which is needed to run your application, authorization and trust management uh, required to authenticate the access of your extension app and the destination and connectivity service services basically we are using to call the OData uh, service and uh, whatever the interaction we are doing from the as uh, for system event mesh will help us to uh, to flow the event uh, from as for hana backend to the cloud front environment so these are the services it required uh, so quickly i will show you how you can set it up uh, like this is my btp account and if i go here in the sub account um uh, you able to see that we have already configured one of the sub account and we already enabled the cloud foundry environment here if you uh, add a entitlement entitlements properly then uh, you able to create the required instance for this application uh, like uh, for creating an application you just it's a very simple you just click on the create button and uh, you either you can type your service or you can uh, you simply select from the type down. So let's say I need a event mesh service. So um, I will I will write it down. This I already uh, mentioned that event mesh service. And uh, after that, I I can select the plan. Default plan will uh, create an instance of the event mesh service, and the standard one give you the a uh, nice ui to access your queue and the webhook so if i select the default plan here uh, this the runtime environment in this space will pop up automatically and then i need to give a instance name and uh, on and click on the next button here you need to define some parameter which is required to create a service instance of the event mesh so for for sake of simplicity like i have already uh, put it this uh, json uh, format parameters in the in my note and here what exactly you need to i think i have copied the wrong one so yeah so this is the one we have to mention this all uh, json payload it already mentioned in the uh, card itself so uh, here you need to mention the uh, event mesh name and the you also need to define the namespace here these two parameter you have to change accordingly and uh, uh, again uh, you can verify and review the instance detail and uh, uh, you can create it easily so for this extension application i have already created the event mesh uh, instance and so i will not do it here so i will show do you the uh, instance now so um, we have a, a default instance and we have a application instance also if i click on this application instance uh, uh the ui will appear okay yeah so ui will uh, this the the event mesh ui will come here you able to see we have a two instance here so uh, the uh, the message we have a two message client and we have configured uh, for our extension app we have configured the message client queue and web, uh, webhook for our extension application so uh, here you're able to see the all the queues are mentioned here you want to create a queue then you can click on a queue here we have to define the queue name and all the parameter required parameter and uh, similar way you can create a webhook uh, which is uh, connected with the particular queue. So this is how the event mesh uh, things and similar way you need to create a different ser other services also. Uh, so like we, we have already defined the uh, destination services, connectivity services, destination services, and the UA services. Uh, UAS, for UA service, you can, uh, for the UA service, you can use the uh, similar parameter uh, in this um, uh, parameters uh, json payload and this one is uh, also you can you can find it out in the project port so uh, 
yeah so these these are the required services for this um, extension app in the btp side uh, so this is all about the btp uh, um, configuration of btp uh, now if you if i go to the next card uh, here uh, you able to see uh, that we uh, we need to configure the microsoft azure platform also for that one you need uh, admin access of the ad uh, Azure Active Directory, and you should have a valid Azure subscription. Uh, let me directly jump into the uh, Microsoft Azure portal here. Uh, what you can do, you need to uh, register your application first. So, uh, to the register uh, to uh, register your application, you can go to the app registration, and here you can. Um, create a new registration um, you will give us give us some name and according to your requirement you can go with the single tenant and multi tenant for uh, uh, here you can select the redirect url option uh, like whether it is a web or a single page application uh, for a meanwhile you can go ahead with the uh, local host but this redirect URL we can change accordingly. Um, uh, if we go to the production um, application production or something, so you can register it, uh, the application itself. For a uh, for this application, we are already uh, the same. We already uh, register our application, and I will show you the param required parameters that are uh, required configuration. We have did it uh for for this application so this application id and the tenant id required uh in the application when we when we are developing the application and uh, the uh, we need a uh, we need to cre create a new uh client secret also and the most important part is we need to uh, provide the api reference uh in the demo you already uh, see that we we are uh, we are uh, we are using the uh, email or we are using the profile information of the user itself and we are creating a online meetings also so these api we able to access because we have uh, because our application having a permission to access it so this api permission uh, you can change according, accordingly as per your application requirement uh then the other important part you have to add a client application uh, also uh, the client application or the application which going to uh, access your extension app so these are the default client of ms team web uh, web ms application or the M M uh, ms team client application which usually you run your uh, mobile desktop or um, um, kind of thing so these are the predefined client ids we have mentioned here uh, so yeah this is from the app registration part so we are uh, using a two uh, uh, resources here one is uh, yeah so one is azure bot and the other one is a sub, uh, storage account storage account of these resources also you can create directly um, uh, that in the in, in, first you need to create a resource group within the resources you can create a, a different resources here and uh, you just click on it and search on the marketplace like azure bot so uh, if you search azure bot here the first uh, preference will come here and here you can uh, you can give the you can create your azure bot directly uh, so we have created this azure bot for our application and uh, yeah so azure bot is basically help it connect with the ms team it's a kind of bridge between the team and uh, our as for uh, our uh, btb application extension application uh, so here what, what configuration is required currently we don't have uh, message endpoint here we the extension application message and endpoint will come here and we we added a two connection setting btp connection setting and the graph connection setting here the btp connection setting basically help us to uh, get the access token related with the btp application and graph will help us to uh, access the uh, apis uh, um, Azure APIs uh, for getting a user information profile and all. Uh, 
uh, then we can add a different multiple channels here like uh, web chat ms team uh, these kind of channel we can add it here directly and uh, yes yeah, so this is from the board side and the other thing is similarly you can create a storage account also a storage account basically we are using it to uh, store the conversation and the uh, conversation of the user and we are also um, the uh, the data related with with the users and the uh, meeting data and the conversation reference these all data we are maintaining here uh, in the in the bot storage so uh, yeah that's it from the azure side now the if i again go to the next card here um, the last configuration we have to do it from the s4 hana side uh, so we are basically doing a two major things here first one is we need a odata service uh, to uh, to get the uh, record of uh, purchase order supplier confirmation and so for that one we have used a sap uh, RAF framework and we also um, create a background job which uh, uh, which uh, which read all the pending supplier confirmation and uh, confirmation for the purchase order and send it back to the uh, SAP event mesh. So um, to connect with the event mesh, uh, we uh, to the S4 system, we have to create a RFC destination. Uh, for that one, um, yeah, so for that one, we, we need a service key. Uh, so uh, from the instance, um, uh, created instance we can uh, <clears throat> yeah we can we can create a service key directly by clicking on this button here uh, we just need to pass a key name uh, and if we click on the create it will create a service key for you <clears throat> service key you can download and the view from here this service key having uh, all the detailed client id client secret access url all the detail related with this event mesh and yeah so if you go to your system uh, to configure the rfc destination you have to run the transaction uh, mf59 okay i think it's close yeah so not opening let me connect again yeah so Okay. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. So here, uh, you have to go with, uh, SM fifty nine. So here we have created the RFC destination for. Uh, for creation of RFC destination, you will go uh, to the create buttons, but we have already maintained this destination here with the name of EM Connects Team. <clears throat> uh, so here we have maintained the um, target system and uh, uh, with the port. Uh, we we need to update this uh, uh, this host name and a host URL which you can get it from the service uh, service key and we also enable the uh, um, SSL um, and uh, these uh, these thing are uh, after uh, activate the SSL if you try to connect it it will give you the 200 okay status so now this rfc destination we can use it into a uh, into a wrap application uh, so in this app application we have uh, we have mentioned the uh, we have created the behavior definitions and uh, uh, service binding all this we can we uh, we have uh, created here like uh, the function for getting a po detail and uh, a, a PO confirmation. These all things we have uh, customized here. And the in the last, yeah. So here, the, here uh, we have created the uh, background job where uh, we will 
we will get the all the pending supplier confirmation um, and uh, we are uh, we are sending them to the uh, uh, to the event mesh uh, so yeah this all configuration you have to do it from the um, s for sana side so yeah so that's it from my end maybe praveen will go through the extension application code and how we can leverage these services in the application over to you praveen yeah. Thanks, Lalit. I will just share my screen. Please let me know once you're able to see my screen. Stop sharing. Okay. Yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Please. Yes, we can see your screen. Yeah. Thank you. So as Lalit mentioned, uh, uh, we have seen till now the configuration from the uh, BTP side and also the Azure and the S4 HANA side. So to connect to uh, S4 HANA from the BTP, so we have uh, two options. It depends on where your S4 HANA instance is running. So if your S4 HANA dedicated instance, it, it, if it is running on-premise, then you have to use this approach of uh, using the destination and the connectivity service. So this is the thing that Uma had uh, already shown the architecture diagram. So if your S4 HANA instance is running uh, on-premise, then you have to use this destination and connectivity service. And suppose if your S4 HANA instance is running on Azure private cloud, or a AWS private cloud, then you can use uh, a new service called SAP private link service, uh, which works in conjunction with the Azure private link. And then it establishes a secure communication between the BTP and the S4 HANA system running on Azure private cloud. So we will see for both these options, uh, like uh, uh, the settings that needs to be done. So the first one, if your uh, S4 HANA is running on-premise, then you have to go with the uh, option of this cloud connector and the connectivity service. So uh, we have the detailed steps uh, in this particular card, uh, how to connect, uh, how to download and install the cloud connector, and then the configuration and the settings done at the cloud connector side. So I have already uh, installed the cloud connector in this particular uh, VM. And once I log into this, So it shows uh, like this. And then the first step here uh, after uh, logging into Cloud Connector is you have to add the sub account. So here you are establishing the connection uh, uh, to the uh, BTP sub account. So here you can give the particular reason where your uh, BTP sub account is present, the sub account ID, the user password, and all these uh, details. And then you can save them. Uh, here I have already added my sub account, so that's why I'm not uh, repeating this particular step. And then, uh, so now our connectivity is we want to connect from BTP to the S4 HANA system, which is on-premise. So we need to select this particular option, cloud to on-premise. And we have to come to this particular tab, access control. You can click on this particular plus button to add a, uh, a system mapping. Right. So here, uh, it, since it's a S4 HANA system, we choose the ABAP uh, system as the backend type. If it's a uh, HANA or if it's a other system, so accordingly, you need to choose the a particular system. So select this and the protocol is HTTPS. We want to connect it securely. So we use this particular protocol. Then we add the internal host port and few other details. And then once we click on uh, add then this particular uh, system mapping is added so now i have already added it so you can see here so this is the particular uh, system mapping that i have added and once this is added then if we can go to the uh, uh, corresponding btp system so i have already logged into btp and you can see in the cloud connectors and you can see this particular thing this is the expose backend system so this shows that we have established the connectivity between the BTP and the cloud connector. And once we have done this, and we, now we need to establish the connectivity from the cloud connector to the 
S4 HANA system uh, uh, for the principal propagation. So for this, what we need to do is we come here and then we select the on-premise. Then we need to, uh, yeah, like we need to create the system certificate or we can import a uh, existing certificate or we can create a self-signed certificate. So you need to, and these steps are clearly mentioned in the documentation. You need a couple of certificates, system certificate, CA certificate. And then you need to do some settings for the principal propagation as well. Uh, so that the same user that is, uh, who has logged in, like say the purchase manager who has logged in in uh, uh, Microsoft Teams, that same user is propagated uh, all the way from SAP BTP to the uh, backend S4 HANA system. So the same user is propagated. So for that, we need to configure the principal propagation as well. So it, uh, there are like uh, uh, almost five to six steps that needs to be done. So all these steps are documented. And once uh, all the steps are done, then we can go to this particular principal propagation step. And then there is a button here to synchronize it with the BTP settings. So once we synchronize, we can see here this particular entry that comes. So uh, this is how we uh, configure the principal propagation in the cloud connector to connect to S4 HANA system on premise from BTP. And all these steps are mentioned in this particular uh, document. So now we will proceed with the next step where we see how to connect to S4 HANA system from BTP using the private link service. So, So you can see here, uh, this particular thing. So this is the uh, setup that I was talking about for the private link. So uh, this particular blog post is also mentioned in the card. So if we click on this particular thing, you can see. So your S4 HANA system is running on Azure private cloud and we have a load balancer here. And uh, all of this, this load balancer is exposed via the Azure private link service and SAP private link service is the counterpart here uh, running on the BTP. So this is how uh, the applications that are running on BTP can securely communicate via this private link service and the Azure private link service to this S4 HANA system. So for doing this setup also, there are like uh, um, uh, almost uh, like uh, some five to six steps that needs to be done to set up this particular connectivity. Of course, it starts from uh, like adding the entitlements uh, of private link service in BTP and then creating the Azure private link service, the private endpoints and all these things. So you can see here. This particular screen is it's my session is coming. Till the time it refreshes, maybe we can just uh, okay, just give me a second and just log in into the system. So now I have logged into Azure. So you can see here, this is the private link service that I was talking about, uh, which is creating a secure uh, channel to communicate from BTP to uh, S4 HANA system. And you can see this particular private endpoint, each uh, uh, like you need to create this particular private endpoint from each BTP sub account, whichever wants to communicate uh, to this S4 HANA system. And this is the particular uh, service that I was talking about, the private link service. So click on the create. Just show it to you. So this is the private link service that I was talking about. 
plan dev and then you can give the instance name In the next you can give the particular resource id this resource id comes from uh, here and you need to give the resource id sub resource the request message and all and then once you click on the create then here we get a particular uh, uh, like say entry which says it is in the pending state and uh, once it is approved then you can see here it is as approved and once it is approved then if you come here and then see this particular uh, private link service you can see here uh, it uh, the status will be created till that time it will be pending for approval so this is how we create the private link to securely communicate uh, between the BTP and the S4 HANA system. So now we have uh, seen all the uh, settings that need to be done or the three steps I can say uh, from the BTP, uh, Azure, S4 HANA, then the cloud connector, private link, uh, whichever is needed. Now let's go through the code quickly to see uh, like the main files that are present in the code. So if you see this particular code, this is the uh, the GitHub repository link is also present in uh, one of the cards. So you can clone this particular repository and uh, you can open it in your uh, uh, editor, either Visual Studio Code or you can use uh, Business Application Studio for development. And this particular code, we have uh, segregated it into three parts. So uh, as you have seen in the demo, one is a the extension application, uh, uh, the backend that is running on BTP, it's acting as a server. And then we have a side panel in the Microsoft Teams in meeting application. So that part is acting as the client here. The code for that is a React JS app. And then uh, uh, we require uh, some configuration files that need to be, uh, like say, uploaded to Microsoft Teams uh, App Center. Uh, uh, so that the, this app will be discoverable for the, uh, like say the users, the purchase managers who can install that particular uh, application uh, to their Microsoft Teams. So to deploy this particular extension app, then we have this particular file, manifest file. Uh, you can see here. So this, uh, uh, this is the application name. Uh, you can change it or you, uh, like uh, whatever name you want to keep, you can keep here uh, for this particular application. And then this requires some of the dynamic variables that need to be uh, set uh, so that, uh, like say, the application can connect to corresponding services as well. And all these things are mentioned. Uh, you have this start sample here. And you can see here, and we have given, uh, like say, what uh, needs to be the values here, right? For the scenario, it's like we have uh, two scenarios, like, uh, Azure Private Cloud or on-premise where your S4 HANA is running. So based on that, uh, like we have some uh, changes in the code uh, because if it's on-premise, then it has to go through the cloud connector, uh, the destination service, uh, connectivity service. And if it's a Azure Private Cloud, then it uh, goes via the uh, private link service. So for that, you need to mention this uh, scenario. And uh, accordingly, you need to mention other things like BTP landscape, whether it is in EU20 or US20, U10. So wherever your sub account is there, you need to mention these details. And then uh, this connection name graph and connection name BTP. So uh, Lalit just uh, uh, showed like there are two uh, connections that are set up, right? We are the BTP connection and then the graph connection uh, that we are using. So the names of those, we have kept it dynamic. So you can uh, uh, put these things here. And then the blob container name, which we are using for conversational uh, references for storing these things, uh, the chat uh, conversation references. So you can mention these things here. And this Microsoft app ID and password, uh, this is the, uh, when we do the app registration uh, for that particular application, we have the app ID and app password. So you can mention those things here. And then the Microsoft AD tenant ID. So uh, this is for the user communication. So you can mention these uh, uh, details here. So I can just show the sample also. Like this is the one, whatever, for our uh, sub-account, the values. 
and uh, uh, in the documentation we have provided uh, from where to pick up each uh, uh, value the respective value right so in the documentation we have given the screenshots as well from which particular location you can uh, pick all these uh, values and then you can store in this particular file so uh, for the side panel uh, in meeting application all the code is present in this particular client folder and you can see here uh, it has uh, like I say it's a very simple application where you just have the uh, like a couple of uh, react js elements where where you can select the particular uh, purchase order and the purchase order item and then you can query the s4 and then you can change the uh, supplier confirmations uh, based on the discussion with the supplier so that code is present uh, in this particular uh, client uh, folder and then coming to the server folder uh, we have uh, uh, this particular thing so lalit was mentioning about this uh, uh, event mesh notification right so this uh, uh, extension application we are exposing one particular api which is uh, 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 like say being called from the s4 hana system so this is uh, like say as a uh, background job we can schedule once in a day uh, so that whenever the purchase manager comes uh, in the morning right so he can get the notification of all the purchase orders that require his attention like say the purchase orders which have the pending supplier confirmations or say the you asked for the uh, quantity 100 or 200 and then the supplier has only confirmed 60 or 70 so you can negotiate with the supplier have discussion and then you can come to a common understanding so that he can supply more so for those things so uh, this is the endpoint that we have exposed and then uh, it gets this particular data from the s4 and it sends accordingly to the respective purchase manager and you can see, so all the adaptive cards that are uh, present in the um, like the uh, microsoft teams uh, application so all these adaptive cards the welcome card then the uh, event pivot card then the search pivot card and then the line item details then the scheduling meeting scheduling card all those cards uh, the definition for all those uh, you can see in this particular adaptive cards yes. and then uh, whatever dialogues that we see on the screen right each dialogue is present in one one file uh, we are following a waterfall uh, based approach here so the main dialogue is having the reference to all the dialogues and then this dialogue uh, like uh, one is the search pivot so you uh, all the functionality that is provided by the bot right you can search the purchase orders so the code for searching the purchase order is here it can fetch the details from the s4 hana system accordingly and uh, uh, this gives uh, the purchase order and then suppose you want to uh, fetch the line item details for a particular purchase order that particular code is here and once you uh, fetch the line item details if you want to schedule a meeting uh, with the supplier right to confirm uh, like say certain uh, quantities or the delivery date changes uh, then you can schedule a meeting so the code for scheduling the meeting we have it here schedule call dialer so you can go through uh, these particular things uh, uh, in detail and for all the services like say we have uh, uh, here we are mainly using uh, two APIs as Lalit mentioned one is uh, connecting to the S4 so for connecting to S4 uh, all the code is present in this particular class the CRUD operations to create or update the supplier confirmations and then uh, uh, details related to fetch the particular purchase order related details all the things are present here and we have this graph client and this particular graph API we are using to fetch the details related to the Microsoft Teams user. Uh, so one is to get uh, his particular uh, uh, profile information, then uh, uh, the to add the application, this particular in-meeting application to the chat and uh, adding the tab to the meeting, all those things that are happening automatically. So that code is present in this particular file. You can see here. So this is how we are adding the tab to the meeting and then when we are scheduling a meeting we have this create meeting uh, option so the code for that is present here this is the server code 
and uh, once uh, we want to deploy this particular application to the BTP, then we can uh, just accordingly, as I mentioned, we can change all these things in the vast.yml, the respective values, and then we can deploy this particular application. So the uh, commands to deploy are also given in detail in the documentation. So in a nutshell, if you want to just build the client, you can use this command to build the server, you can use this. And if you want to build both server and client and then deploy it to the uh, BTP, then you can use this particular command. It just runs both of them and then it uh, deploys also to the BTP. So once the application is deployed to the BTP, uh, you can see here, show the particular application that is deployed already to the BTP. So this is the application that uh, uh, we have deployed to the BTP. And this is what will be called from the Microsoft Teams whenever we uh, query the, uh, like say the query the S4. So the all calls go through this particular application. And we have uh, one more uh, configuration component. This is uh, required to upload it to the uh, the Teams app store so that, uh, like say, the users can discover this particular application and then they can, uh, like say, install this application. So here, this is just a configuration file that we will have, the manifest JSON configuration file and the uh, icons for the particular app. So. Here it's all uh, the dynamic configuration and we, we have some placeholders. So here these all need to be replaced with the respective values. So this is the uh, Microsoft Teams application ID. And then this is the domain placeholder. So this particular domain is the application, whatever we deployed on the BTP, right? The URL of that particular app, we need to keep it here as a configuration URL. So once these changes are done, then we can, uh, we can upload this particular app to the Microsoft Teams admin center. So this is the Microsoft Teams admin center page. I can, uh, so whoever is the admin in your organization, he need to log in here. He has to go to the manage apps and then you have an option to upload this new app. So these files I have zipped and then I have put it here. So this we can upload it to this. So once it is uploaded, you can see here. So I have already uploaded. So this application is present. And uh, if you like say want to upload a newer version of it, you change the code or you change some features, then you can upload it again, right? You have an option to upload the new version also. You can change the version number, increment it and then upload. And once it is uploaded, then the purchase managers or the users in the organization, they can log in here to the Microsoft Teams and then they can find this particular app. So this application is there. So I can just install this particular app to my workspace in Microsoft. So you can see this particular app. So as soon as this is installed, this is the welcome message I was talking about from the Teams extension application. So this is just, we are giving a brief of what all you can do with this particular uh, procurement bot, supply collaboration bot. So, and uh, uh, to send the particular, uh, uh, like the purchase orders, which require the attention of the uh, a purchase a procurement manager. So we have this particular program. This can be run as a background job. So now I'm just running it uh, to just uh, get the immediate notification. So as soon as we execute it. Yeah, so I get the particular notification and you can see uh, right now there is only one purchase order that requires uh, the procurement manager's attention. But uh, if there are multiple purchase orders in a real life scenario, you'll have so many purchase orders. So you can get all those details here. And when I select this, I can further drill down and then get uh, what all the line items that are present here. And then the order quantities, I can see. You can see the order quantity is 100, but uh, the supplier has only confirmed 70. 
So now if I want to schedule a meeting with the supplier, I can do it uh, right away directly from this particular bot itself. I can just say yes. So this brings me to the uh, screen where I can enter the details. All this will be pre-filled, but if I want to enter some other details, I can customize them. I can change the time when I want to do the meeting. I can invite like someone else apart from the supplier. Uh, and then I can just click on the schedule. So this will schedule a meeting with the supplier. So this way you can schedule a meeting with the supplier. And once the meeting is scheduled, then you can automatically see here. So you can see this particular thing. So this is like one of the meeting that I have scheduled. So if I join this particular meeting with the supplier, then automatically this particular uh, uh, in-meeting application or the side panel is already present here. So you can see this particular thing and then the purchase order details, everything is uh, the context of the meeting is already pre-filled in this. And using this, I can uh, discuss with the supplier and then uh, like accordingly update the quantities as shown in the video. So you can see here. So the purchase order number is already pre-filled and I can select the particular purchase order. I can search for that particular purchase order. I can see the confirmations can see here so you have two confirmations with quantity 40 and then you have one more confirmation with quantity 30 70 so suppose uh, the supplier agrees to supply few more items uh, since we require more items here so maybe if he's agreeing to supply 50 so we can change the quantity here and if you want the delivery also to be done early and supplier is okay with it you can change the delivery date as well right and then you can just say save, then it will be saved all the way to the S4 HANA system directly once you click on the save. So this is how uh, you can collaborate with the supplier. So we have right now taken uh, this scenario of building collaborative application uh, with the supplier where procurement managers can talk to the suppliers. But this scenario uh, can be used for anything uh, like say the purchase order approval, purchase requisition approval, sales order approval, or any uh, other scenario wherever you require this particular Microsoft Teams extension, the similar approach can be used. So with this, like we have seen all the configurations and then briefly we have seen the code and also the uh, settings that are needed uh, to deploy and run the application and then test the application. So thank you very much. That's all from my side. Uh, over to you, Uma. Yeah, thank you, Praveen and Lalit. So uh, that is uh, that is uh, all from our side that we had in this session. Okay, thank you so much, yeah. uh, Uma, Lalit, and uh, Praveen for a great session. If you guys have any questions for uh, any of our presenters, I see that there are several questions already. Um, and are, have you already responded to some of these? Yes, that... we have responded. Okay. Is, are there any questions? Uh, if there's a question in the chat that we haven't responded to, please unmute your line and ask your question. Okay. This guy. It's just my last question. Um, how, how how does the ops manager know that these are their purchase orders? Uh, assuming there are different ops managers. Uma, do you want to take that? Yes. So uh, these details are, you know, uh, the specific purchase orders which are assigned to the, uh, uh, you know, specific uh, uh, purchase order managers or operations managers. You know, all of these are there in the S4 HANA. And uh, when we are sending these events to Event Mesh, you know, that is where we are sending this information 
uh, as to who is uh, you know to who to whom this particular notification has to go so the extension application that is there on the btp will take care will assess and accordingly it will route it to the ms teams it is it, sending like a, like an email like ops manager email along with the purchase order is is it using that as a yes. So we no. the, the payload we have uh, sent it from the uh, S4 system uh, to the um, event mesh, then to MS team. Uh, that payload having a supplier, uh, this thing, uh, operation manager uh, email ID there. So, so we will we will identify that which uh, to whom uh, uh, this uh, uh, this operation uh, this event need to be not to whom we need to notify, and uh, we will uh, we will segregate it there itself that where uh, which uh, uh, <clears throat> to which we have to send this notification. So it will only goes to the. Um, the person, um, uh, the email we have mentioned in the payload itself. So, yeah. And uh, I saw in a demo that you click on more details. Uh, all those, those details, they were sent along with that purchase order. Or uh, when you click on more details, it makes a connection to ask for HANA to, to get those extra details. Uh, yes, when you click on uh, more details, uh, it fetches like further details because uh, suppose say I need to send uh, say 10 purchase orders that require the attention. So uh, the space uh, in the notification in Microsoft Teams, uh, I cannot send like say for each purchase order, say it has further 10 line items. I won't be able to send all of them in a single notification, right? Uh, so that's the reason uh, uh, we'll uh, initially with the notification that comes from the event mesh, we are just sending the particular purchase order numbers. So if the purchase manager wants to know further details of any purchase order, then he can uh, select that particular purchase order. Then uh, the drill down query is sent to S4HANA accordingly. And who, who's doing that drill down details? Is it only the purchasing manager or also the vendor? Uh, no, this is only the purchasing manager. This particular uh, um, uh, like say the bot or, or the uh, Microsoft Teams application, it's only used by the purchasing manager. And how? And the way the supplier comes into picture is when the purchasing manager schedules the meeting, right? Then he can invite the supplier also to the meeting. And then uh, during the meeting, only the purchasing manager will have access to the side panel and updating the S4 HANA system. The supplier can only see it. And when the purchasing manager clicks on details to fetch all the details, how does it connect to S4 HANA? Is it using the private link or the cloud connector? Uh, it depends on uh, where your uh, S4 HANA system is running. If it's on-premise, then it connects via the cloud connector. And uh, if, it's a, uh, if it's running on Azure private cloud, then the recommended approach from SAP is using the private link service. And what was used in the demo, the private link? Uh, yes, have, yeah. uses the private link. Yeah. And how, how do you connect? Do you, do you use principal publication in this case, or do you use some system user in your demo? Uh, no, we have used the principal propagation. Uh, for both the cases, uh, we have detailed steps, like say how you do principal propagation when you use the cloud connector, and how you do principal propagation when you use the uh, private link. So we have uh, the detailed steps mentioned uh, in both the cases in the uh, Discovery Center mission. And when you connect to the S4 backend, do you call an O data service to get the details, or is it some RFC connection? Yeah, oh, so God. for for the uh, for for getting a purchase uh, uh, confirmation detail, we we uh, we are using a O data service, and we uh, for the uh, for the event mesh things, we have used the RFC destinations. So okay. auditor service we have built it in the wrap like uh, this is a wrap application where we have uh, exposed the auditor service for the purchase uh, purchase order confirmation uh, things yeah and the uh, and the uh, the operations manager they exist as a user in S four and has access authorization to the auditor service yes yeah, yes yeah. that that is right so all the calls then from the this particular uh, Microsoft Teams application to S4 uh, go via that particular signed in user. Okay. 
the operations managers user so the same email id needs to be present in btp and the same uh, uh, like the user uh, the purchasing manager should exist in s4 with the corresponding email id the email address need to be same from uh, teams to uh, btp to s4 okay so should you do okay. you, you do principal application based map based on email email address yes, yes. yeah 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 email based yes. yeah okay okay thanks uh, guy for those questions uh, we are a little past the 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 hour, but uh, are, if there's any other questions, I, I think we can we can spare one or two more minutes. If there's anybody else that has any additional questions, See, we have one more question. Why do we need another private link service uh, when we already having a cloud connector? So we have mentioned both the approaches in our uh, this thing um, in this application. Uh, so uh, and the code wise also we have uh, both both the reference in the code like uh, either you can use the private link or you can use the cloud connector so this the scenario which praveen showcased is we have used private link there private link service so yeah if we are using a private link so uh, we need not to use cloud connector and if you are going with the cloud connector so private link is not required okay yeah, so just to add on to it uh, see if if you are using the uh, private link right so uh, uh, there are many other uh, azure services also that are getting exposed via this uh, route of private link service like say you have a cosmos db that is running on azure and uh, you are you have an application which is on sap btp that wants to consume this particular uh, cosmos db then that is uh, th this uh, uh, private link service supports it so not only s4 hana there are many other uh, azure services and slowly this list is uh, getting expanded and all those uh, can be consumed by the btp applications using the private link mm -hmm. okay. are those services also running in the, in the same private cloud like cos what's it called cosmos db Cosmos DB, yeah. So, if the the Cosmos DB, if it's running on Azure, right, directly, uh, so that particular thing also can be exposed to be uh, consumed uh, by the BTP applications. Okay. Okay. Awesome. If you guys have any additional questions, um, you can reach uh, Uma, Praveen, and Lalit. Um, if you guys can just type here your email address in the chat for everybody to um, have so that they can reach out to you if they have any additional questions. Hopefully we've answered uh, most of your questions and maybe popped a few new questions um, when we sign off. Um, please do reach back out to us uh, to get any additional uh, assistance in the future with regards to this mission. Thank you again, Uma, Lalit and Praveen for, for a great interactive session. Hopefully everybody, all of you have um, have gotten most of your questions answered. Thank you again for everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us in our 12th and final episode for 2022. Um, I will be sending out the new series for 2023. So stay uh, tuned for that. And um, in the next week or two, uh, that series should be coming in. And if you have any ideas on specific missions that you guys would like to see, please do send me an email and we will try to incorporate that in the coming year. And with that, thank you so much and um, have a great end of the year. And we'll talk to you guys again in, uh, in January. Have a great morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you're located. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a nice day.